hey guys welcome back to java for beginner class so in this lecture we're going to learn java variables and it types you know different operator that we use in java and so on okay so the variables are named space of memory which is stored data what does it mean it means whenever we you know uh, declare any data and then that time there is a java memory we know which is called heap let's an example so example i want to declare some data to a variable so it means example you know i want to declare say 10 there's a number okay and then also there is a 20 number so when you want to declare those are called data when you want to declare any data that time you have to you know uh how it's going to work or store in java there is a called java memory or heap so example or the place where your data is going to store so example this is called jvm or you have heard jvm java virtual memory or heap in java virtual memory all of your data is going to be stored how is going to store so example you know i declare a number is called 10 so this 10 will be stored somewhere in jvm or java heap something like it will allocate some space in jvm and it will store and when and every data when is going to store it, this location will be there will be reference you know there will be some number or id you know to use to refer that location where the 10 is been stored some you know some there will be some address for this location so what would be so 0101 so assume so there will be some you know reference or address to refer this location but this address will generate automatically behind the scene and we don't know and it's hard to remember it's to to make things easy our reference you know we said or java said okay you can store this number to a variable so variable is nothing say example i will say variable a okay it could be anything it could be one character it could be word you know whatever you want so this is your variable and when you use equal operator it means this 10 is assigned to this a variable it means whatever the address is uh, you know generate for this locator you know it will be indirectly this address equals to a okay it means you know uh, when you say use you know instead of this address 10101 we can use a as a reference which will be you know represent this address or you know the address of this locator where the 10 has been stored this this is the same thing when you say a equals to 10 it means in a java heap memory there is a locate there is a location where is the reference is a and store number 10 similarly if you you know say 20 it's a b it's the same thing there will be another you know location will be allocated and 20 will be is there and it will be reference will be b so when you use b it means it will automatically find because this is a every location is unique because every location will create will have a unique address which will be tied with your variable so this is called your variable okay this is called your data and data will assign to a variable and when you assign to a variable you have to say what type of variable this your type of the variable is always depend on the data okay which which is in this case it is called integer or it's a, when it's a number it's called integer we'll see okay let's so this is the very high level behind the scene when you declare a data how it is stored you know and the relation with the variable let's get back over here so this is i'm saying that variables are named space of memory which is stores the data and in in a programming language whether it's any programming language you know there are two types of variable usually you can find one is called primitive variable another one is called reference variables so what is primitive variables all the basic types of variables or default variables that comes with your uh, with your uh, 
programming language, whether it's uh, Java, C, C, C Sharp, those are called are all are primitive types of variable. Example, it could be integer. You know, all the primitive variables is integer, boolean, character, string, float, long, and double. You know, those are all defaults when you uh, install a, a programming language, a programming language like a Java, C Sharp. Those are the default, you know, variables are comes with your program so in a, in a in a programming library. You can find those variables type, you know, by default. So what does this means? So primitive data types are defined by the programming language. You can see what are those integer. First is integer. What is integer? Integer is nothing when you have a number from zero to nine. It means max could be ten digit that time it will call as an integer and you can have it you know uh you can store that number uh, this data to any variable a b a i as i showed you and then the type you have to say int because this is a number zero to nine it's a number and because it's the in is the type of the data that's why you have to say what type of variable your type of variable always depend on what type of data so this is an integer type of data. Now next, and when you have a long integer, long integer number, it means your integer it's more than ten digit. Zero to nine. Here is a zero to nine. Then it's integer. But here you can say it's a long. It's a, this is a total digit definitely more than ten. We can easily see. So if you have a long integer, that time it will call as a long. So you have to add l at the end after your data. You know as a suffix and then this is a variable what any variable you can declare we declare over here l and the type would be long so when you say type is long it means it's long integer and then next is a float float type what is float type when you have a you know decimal like you know in your integer value that time you can say float so it's a short decimal so example two three four two then there is a decimal dot then three at uh, three four so when you have a short decimal number that's called float so you have to add you know dic add or or f as a suffix you know when you declare a float data and then this is your variable and the type is float because this is a float type of data and now if you have a long decimal you know if you have a long decimal you can see this is a long decimal like here is a number is more than 10 then then dot then there's a another you know five six seven ten uh, uh you know number that time this is called long decimal so long decimal it nothing is you will call as a double so you have to be put in a variable and the type would be double okay and then character as you, you very easily understand correct is nothing a single character you can declare a single character that's called correct you know the character the type would be c h a r this is it means and here is it should be lowercase okay so all of the variable type have to be start with the lowercase except the string okay so this was a typo so it c should be lowercase and then string when you have a word or sentence like hello hello world you know i love java this will consider and if you put those things those word or sentence within a double code it have to be that's called a string uh, one more thing when you declare a character your character have to be in single code then it will trade it will be defined as a character and for the string you know whatever you put even like a single character you put but if you put that character uh single character or any number within a double code it will still consider as a string okay this is important to remember so anything you put within a double code it will consider as a string and your string return type here is the only the exceptional s it should be uppercase because the string not only the data type a string is also a class you know you know you will understand later on but just for now this is the one exception so string always should be you know as will start with uppercase and another type of data is called boolean so well you know if you have any data like a true or false you know to do to, to define true or false that time you can 
you know your data type could be boolean say you know i want to declare a data which is called true so it puts in a variable so b is equals to true and the data type would be boolean and again here b should be lowercase okay that's all our primitive data types and most of the time in our coding we'll use primitive data type. most of the times like 70 to 80 percent 10 or 15 to 20 percent you will use non-primitive data type okay so example you know let's have a very quick or i will show you let's start with non-premium non-primitive so non-primitive data type what is non-primitive data type it's a it's a non-primitive or reference data type are defined by the programmer so non-primitive data type defined by the programmer and primitive data type defined by the programming language it is the default type of data but non-primitive is defined by the programmer there's no specification for the non-primitive data type. but example since it's a defined by the programmer here is an example your arrays arrays could be a data type your classes could be a data type okay so i'll show an example uh, for the class because you know we haven't you don't know uh, we haven't covered the arrays so you will not understand if you go deep drive with the arrays but i will go through uh explain you one class uh, data type in this data type of the variable is the class whose object it is going to refer so i will explain you this is one example uh let's see go to our eclipse say assume that this is my class there is a class i create it's called my test class okay and in this class you know i have declared two variables one is the integer type of variable where is a equals to 10 another one is string variable it's a david okay and here is the main method you know just in uh, just an fy your class must have a main method you you know your compiler will not able to execute your code without a main method so main method is like a head of your class you must have a main method and your compiler will always execute the code within the main method so in the main method here is a curly it's a curly braces opening and closing within this whatever the code is going to be your compiler will only execute those but you can ask me like i can see here is another thing so you can say outside of the main method there is a another method you know what is method you know you, you will understand in our upcoming class the method or function you know here method or function nothing is a block of code that we create to do some specific job just for now so here is this is called method i create a method outside of the main method but it still is inside the class because your class opening curly braces over here opening bracket and closing bracket here so whatever you have everything over here that's a part of your class okay and so inside this class you have a two variable you have a main method you have a main method so this is your method so method could be outside of your main method but if you want to use this method you have to call this method inside your main method because as i said your compiler will only execute the code inside the main method okay so if you want to use any things you know those are all the properties those are all the object of your class okay so if i want to use this method this is a method i said um, i give a name method do additional and i i declare there's a two variable over here integer x and integer y I didn't assign any value if you notice that so when you declare a very uh, method and you can declare some variable inside here or you can could uh, keep it an empty if you declare the variable those are called parameter okay and here i'm returning i'm returning inside them this method that you know whatever the would be value that i will assign later on for the x and y you know this will be addition it will be add and it will return that value to this method so this method will have the value of the addition of x and y if i want to you know actually pass you know any number actual some data that i have to call this method inside the main method because again main method is the method where your compiler will read the code and it will execute it so any code you want to execute yeah it have to be called or have to be uh, I have to be called as a reference inside your main method or I have to be code over here so that it can be part of your execution. 
so now if i want to call this addition method how i can call this method that time you know if you want to call anything you know in, inside your main method and uh, that time you have to create an object of your class so this is your class name so to create an object of your class you have to use new keyword you know we know it new keyword then your class name and then and then sorry and then puts this so this is this is called object you create an object of your class so object is nothing you create a clone so when you create an object it means you create a clone of your class clone of your class it means you know in this class whatever you have everything you have this two variable you have a main method you have this addition method this everything you know there is a snapshot will find inside this object because object this is a clone of your this class so put this object in a variable say i would say t okay and then or i would say obj this is a you know this is an object reference so this object i put in a variable and then you can and then when you declare a variable you have to return it you have to give a return type so what is the type of the return type for this object reference so this is called a variable or object reference where this object reference where you assign the object now what would be the return type of this object you know this is because this object is not a specific integer or a specific uh, you know string because it has it is the clone of your class so it has everything you have in your in your class you have a in your class you have a method you have a uh, two different variable and so on so that time you have to the return type of the object or this variable will be the same class type right so this is the class type now so this obj this is the object reference or you can say variable okay this object reference or variable it's return type the class you see the class is now using as a data type as a variable type because this object is nothing is variable and what would be the variable time variable type is always depends what's the type of the data is assigning to this variable so here it's uh this variable type it's a object and it's a return type would be the same class type so here you can see you know your class can be used as a object reference or as a data type as a variable data type okay and now you can see if i want i can use obj dot obj now you will find everything over here you can find here is the method do addition method the where this method is comes from this method was here it came from here okay so now i can call the method or any object any properties using the object reference so because why because this obj is an object reference so object reference means it's referring this object and this object is nothing is the clone of your class it means this obj has the knowledge have the has the clone knowledge about this class because this obj has assigned this object and this object is nothing the clone of your class so indirectly you can say this obj has the knowledge about this class it means everything you have in this class this obj has that knowledge so since it has the knowledge about this everything it means any variable or even this method you can call any object using this object reference over here so that's why you know when you put obj dot dot you can say i can easily find i can easily find this method over here do it you know you see do equal you see i i find this method over here right uh here do addition you see i find this method so easily you can call this method anything right so and then when you call this method this methods now this methods it's moved over here using this object reference and in this method there is a two variable i can see right so there's a two variable it means it's declared the variable but didn't assign any data so when you call any method and it has some parameter it means a variable without a uh, data that time you have to pass the data here so example if i pass the data say uh, 100 
and for the first one 100 will assign to x and then the second one is like 200 will assign to y so x is now 100 and y is now 200 okay so here is 100 and 200 so it should be return it should return like 300 right 300 so this should this is the this line of code will have the value is called 300 and now if you want to see this 300 in your console you can you know you can put this one you can say sys out sys out okay you can put this one in a print and now you know if you want to see this value you know by this code is returning 300 if you want to see this 300 you have to put this code inside this system.out.println because system.out.println will print the whatever you know the data you pass over here it will print over here so i can copy this one i can make it short copy this one over here so that time you don't need this line so you are shorting you know so this is called optimization you can optimize the your code instead of writing more lines you can you know put a in a couple of lines in a one line so here this will return 300 and this 300 will print by this command so it will show over here so save it now you can run it you will see it okay this 300 you see this is the 300 so you know that's the object reference so this is the way you can see this your class can be used as a object type or data type okay so let's get back to work so this is the non-primitive that's what you can now we can understand non-primitive or reference data type are defined by the programmer here is a class and this is the one example you know create an object of a class and then you can use the your object reference type would be the your class type so so this is the example i already explained you okay now reference variable reference variables are used to refer to an object so we already covered this this is called reference variable so here is the t is the reference variable here is a you know obj is the reference variable so reference variable is refer a object an object is nothing is a clone of your class okay so it means your object your reference variable have the knowledge about the class will have the snapshot about your class so it means it will have the knowledge everything you have in your class so you can use this object to call any element any object whether it's a variable or any method inside your main method okay so i don't want to explain more about it so here is an example we use over here you know uh, uh test is the class and we use a uh, create an object of a test class and use the t is the object reference and is the return type is the test and is the t is over here using the uh, uh, you know uh, using as a reference variable which stored the address of test object in a heap or java memory okay now next thing is java string and string con concatenation so in java as i said earlier string is a class as well as a data type okay it can be instantiated instantiated like other classes okay so if we use j string as a class it means you know it is a reserved class you know in java so it's a predefined class and it has a lot of method to do some jobs so if we use the job a string as a class you can uh, and you want to call any method inside the string class because it's already predefined it's available in java library it comes with the java library so if you want to call any method inside the string class you have to create an object of that string class and use the object reference to call any method like like we did over here right we create a we create an object of the class and use the object reference to call a, call this method inside this class. Similarly, string is already defined class that comes with a Java library. So there is a lots of method and there is a lots of helpful or beneficial method comes with a string class. If you want to call any method from that string class, you have the same create an object of the string class this way. New then this is a class name use this is your object reference then you use this s dot you will see all the method inside okay you will see all the method inside you know if you want to see i can 
let's put it over here create an object of you know a string and then use the s dot you find there's a lots of method all the method is being already created inside this string class you know it's a char character add car add you know the code point add there's lots of methods so you have to know this so you know which method you are going to use or before that you have to understand the which method does what then you can use or you can call those method and it can very it can be very useful okay now string concatenation is basically a way to combine two or more strings into a single string this is done by using a plus operator so you know you we know that the string can be a data type also so and and how you can be you can see this i declare over here a variable is called david and this is a variable name is name and its type is a string right so anything so you put within a double code it will consider as a string so you can you know concatenate is two string together you can use over here say example and you can put in a single string variable say we it's a one string and then you can use plus operator then it's r another string this is another string this is another string and after that this is called dot you know even if you see this your dot could be a string if you put in a double code so all together and here is a multiple string you can you can concatenate using a plus operator and puts in a single uh, string variable so here s is means like it's a, we are learning java okay so this is the meaning so this is the way you can use concatenate uh use the plus operator to do a concatenation operation between multiple string and here is another example a string value can be concatenated with with any other data type so here is example it could be it's not only necessary it have to be with a, all of the the uh you know your uh different data should be all of the uh string it could be different type of data here example there is a true there's a boolean value you know boolean data it's puts in a b and so b is a true so here is you can say this is is a string then plus and this is a empty strings so when you say in there's nothing it's called empty so there will be space this is and then b is means true so this is true and this puts in a variable is called s okay and this is all this s is it's as a string type of data okay now job java operators so java operators it's like you know any other programming language they have some common operators do some operation okay here is a arithmetic operators the plus the plus is very simple we know the plus is the, to do some addition operator or a string or uh, uh you know concatenation we, we have seen there's a minus is used to subtract you know subtract some value from value a to b and this is a multiplication multiplication operator to do some multiply in between the two uh data or two variable you can say there's a division you know this is the division operators to do a division between the two variable uh data this is a reminder reminder operator you know when you do division if there is a left you know uh that's all i hope that you understand uh, you know this reminder what is reminder so reminder is nothing say example you know you have 21 if you divide 21 by 5 so here is a uh the 4 is it 20 and there is a one over here this is this one is called a reminder so this is a reminder okay reminder okay i hope that you understood that so sometimes you know we use this reminder value to do some uh, problem uh, or to do some resolve uh, resolve some upper you know some uh, uh, issues or problems and then you know uh, uh, double you know there there is a unary operator so which is a double plus double plus is used to increment it is called increment operators so it's nothing if you say let's go here here so if you say we say a equals to 10 but if you say a plus plus it means it will be increment by one of your present value so it means a plus plus it means it will be 10 plus 1 which is will be 11 okay or if you 
you can use double minus minus it means it will be decrement it, it is a decrement operator so it will decrease the value your present value by one always either it's increment by one or decrement by one so a minus minus it means it's a 10 minus one which is a nine okay okay so that's a decrement operator and then this is a logical complement operator so this is called not there is a basically three types of logical operator we use in a programming language and or and not you know so you can say and and here is a and and or it goes under conditional operators too okay so this is a this is called and like a, you know to add uh, to make an and between two logic or two condition and this is called or you know you know it's like probably you've heard so the or it means like if you have a true uh, or false then it will be true and if you have a true and true then it will be true right so you will see the more use case in our upcoming language so this is uh, upcoming sorry upcoming classes so here is a for now the conditional operator and or and this is called logical this is called not or negation okay it's a not and now it's equality or relational relational so here is a double equal used to compare you know two you can say two integer value equal okay so equal you can say it's a we know it's equal so only equals it means this means it's a, the data is assigned to a variable okay so example when you say here you know 10 equals to a it means 10 assigned to a it's so a value of a is 10 but if you say if you want to use double you know we cannot use a double equal 10 no we cannot use so only the double equal sign used to make a compare to integer value so if example you have a equals to 10 and you have a yeah, say c equals to you have a c equals to 10 then we can say a equals to equals to c okay so it means you can compare two integer value by using a double equal sign okay then here is a not equal so here is a we know this is a logical operator you know it's a negation so negation comes with a if you use with the equal sign, it means not equal. And a lot of times we use this not equal sign, you know, to do a sum uh, operation, to do some to build a some uh, condition. You will see in our upcoming lectures. Here is a very simple. We all familiar with the greater than. This is a less than. You know, um, uh, again, used for different condition or or equality uh, to to do a equality or relational. Uh, between two variable or two data like greater than equal or not less than equal uh you know or only greater than less than or even not equal you know those are things and i explained about that already the cover this double uh this is a sign for the and condition and this is a sign for or condition okay so that's pretty much is you know the, the operators that we're going to use in our programming in our uh, uh in our logic you know in our programming in our uh, uh code to resolve some of the problems you know so that's a pretty high level to cover about the you know java variables and types and also different type of operator thank you so much bye bye